Hello again. This is Ty Warner with Kiss Soft USA. Uh, I'm going to go through another reverse engineering and gear pair example. This will be our second example. There's already an example on our uh, Kiss Soft USA YouTube page. You can go and look at it if you like. Today we're going to talk about <clears throat> a little bit more, um, kind of more real life what happens, right? You're, you're a designer, you're tasked with redesigning an existing set of gears. The existing gear design is not known explicitly. Um, you have some information, you may have to make some measurements. Typically you, you need to design quickly in order to provide a client with a replacement set of gears. And of course you'll have to make some basic measurements and a couple assumptions in order to complete the design. Uh, some of the things we can look at, we can look at our uh, calipers and uh, span measurement tools. You can, get the, you can get a lot of good information very quickly and it can get you kind of very close on your gear design. If you, if you have access to a metrology department, uh, you know, they can, they can use a, uh, a CMM and try and get even more accurate information for you. We measured our gears and we have, of course, we can always count the teeth. We used our uh, set of gauges to define what the module and the pressure angle were. We measured our tip diameter and our root diameter. We looked at a number of teeth spanned. We looked at span length. Face width was easy to measure. Our center distance, we measured that, and we ended up with a 302.99. And then we used a feeler gauge to define what the normal backlash was in this particular set. The other information we have to make assumptions on is the type of tolerances in the tooth. Um, in this case, I would... I would definitely say it's a standard mechanical. Um, I wouldn't say heavy machinery. I would say it's probably a standard mechanical with reversing load. So we'd look at a tooth thickness CD25 or a locomotive gear train CD25. Um, it's a standard that Kissoft uses typically. So that's what we're going to run with to start with. We have our power and our speed information and um, our application factor. So these are the other things that you need to kind of make your assumptions on in the design itself. <clears throat> but now we got to enter some of our information. And the way we do that is we open up our KISSOFT. And I've already entered the module, the pressure angle, the number of gear teeth, face width, and the center distance. Note, I'm checking the center distance here so I can control that. Another method of doing this would be to run the calculations and uh, according to manufacturer. Uh, but I want, I'm going to set the center distance uh, based on a span measurement uh, or the profile shift based on a span measurement. Uh, one thing I am going to allow is large profile shift and I am going to maintain the tip circle and the root circle when I change my profile shift. So I'm going to go ahead and click these guys on. Actually I'm going to click these off first. And um, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start out without rating and factors. So I'm going to click this off. And now I'm just going to look at geometry first because that's kind of where that's the information I really know about. Okay. <clears throat> so on the geometry side I've entered in some basic information I think I know. I'm going to leave the steel as is, and I'm going to leave the lubrication as is as well. Now I'm going to go to my reference profile, and I'm going to put in the diameter for, for gear one, and I'm going to change this to my own input. And remember, uh, our root diameter, we said was 137.271 right here. And this is our root diameter for the, uh, the gears. We have our pinion. Tip diameter, root diameter, and gear diameter. So I enter in 137.271. Now I can make this my theoretical middle, and <clears throat> based on that, I would have a, a maximum and minimum based on my CD25 two tolerances. So if I do this, this is my theoretical, I accept. The assumption I'm making, of course, is that they made everything to nominal. 
And then on my tip diameter, I'm also going to put this as theoretical, which would be my nominal at 164.910. So I'll calculate that. And now you can see I have a root radius here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to size this root radius, 3.42. I'm going to do the same thing under own input for gear 2. And if you remember, we had a root diameter of 437.661. I'm going to calculate that. And I have a, a tip diameter of 465.017. I'm going to calculate this. I'm going to accept it. I'm also going to size that root radius, 0.328. I don't know how this is going to turn out yet, so I hit solve, and it says I have contact interference, right? So why is going, what's going on here? I suspect, quite honestly, that I have maybe something going on in the root diameters, the root radius. Because if you look at our gears, they look pretty good. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to module specific settings, and I'm going to maintain that, <clears throat> that tip and root circle, okay? And I set those up here, right? And I want to maintain that. So I'm going to check these gears again. Gear one. I'm going to go back to factors. And that seems like a big number to me, 0.57 for this gear one. It's pinion. That seems like a real big number. Um, I don't know if I like that number. I think it's going to have to change. I go back to my basic data, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my profile shift. So I'm going to do a profile shift conversion. But first, I'm going to change this to 4, because this is the number of teeth I spanned when I measured this. I'm going to change that to 8. And this is in our tolerance tab. Okay, and the reason I'm doing this, I still get that um, warning is because I want to come in here and I want to do my span on four teeth. And my measurement was 65, if you remember. But if you also remember, we had a normal backlash of 0 0.250. So I'm going to take not quite half of that. I'm going to add it here to my span width. So I'm assuming that my span width is a little short because I'm not, I want to have a, a zero backlash here. So if I make this 65, 0.120 and calculate this. <clears throat> My profile shift coefficient is 0.2496. And I'm going to accept that for gear one. I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to look at gear two. And I have eight tooth span and I had 138.1. And I have 138.2012. Um, I was probably going to add about 0.1, not quite. <clears throat> Not quite half of the other one. Um, I could even add, add a little bit more, but I'm going to add this. I'm going to keep this number right here because uh, I think the span number is going to be fairly close. So I calculate this, negative 0.2513, and I accept it. Now I'm going to solve this again. I still have that issue going on with my gear, but now look at my teeth. Um, I set my profile shift, and they even look better now. I'm going to go back to my reference profile. I'm going to size this root radius coefficient. I'm going to go to gear 2. And I'm going to size that one as well. Now I have a solution. And remember we set the module specific settings to maintain tip and root diameter. You can see our tip diameter is our actual measurement. Our root diameter, our actual root circle we're calling it is a little bit different, right? Why is that different? Well, it's different because in our tolerances, we're using a standard CD25, and you can see our root diameter allowance that's already plugged in here. So if we check this box, and we change our upper to zero for both, and we run this, now we have a, an actual, which is the number that we started out with, 137.271, 437.661. And then this is your, um, your allowance. So that's your max minus. 
I don't know if that's correct or not, but this is this is how I'm setting this up and to get those numbers that I actually have. Um, as an engineer, you're going to, have to make some adjustments and assumptions based on uh, your experience and your knowledge. Our center distance tolerance, I'm not going to change this. What is that in inches? It's pretty tight tolerance. It's probably fine. Maybe we're saying it's a precision gearbox. So now I'm actually ready to enter some information about our rating. I go back to calculation. I click on my rating. I am going to use method B, ISO 6336. I could use AGMA, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to enter my power, which is 75 kilowatts. And I'm going to enter my speed, required service life, and the application factor remain the same. I run my calculation. I have a root safety of 2.6, flank 1.3, and 2.6 and 1.3. At this point, I would be pretty confident to say, here's my gear design. It's a drop-in. It'll work just fine. The other thing we can look at um, is our factors. I'm going to change this to A. I assume everything is centered between bearings on a shaft. It doesn't really change anything, um, but I'm just going to make that change. I like that call now. So here's our design. And this design uh, is actually the same if you go to your examples. If I go ahead and save this, I go to examples, cylindrical gears, and I open gear pair one. You can see our profile shift is pretty close. Uh, the center distance was close. It's a little bit off. And you can see our actual tip circles were, were kind of close and actually fairly close there um, versus what we had, which was uh, we were off by 0 0.07 millimeters and not very far on, on the other one. And our safety factors were about the same. So <clears throat> we were very close on our measurement, uh, just doing hand measurements on this gear pair. And we were able to design a drop-in replacement with about the same root safeties and flank safeties that we would expect to see. Um, furthermore, if we looked at our, our uh, sliding, it's a fairly balanced specific sliding set as well. This is another way of uh, reverse engineering a gear set when you have uh, minimal information. And uh, it's pretty quick. It doesn't take long. And it's a, it's a real powerful way to uh, find a way to drop in replacement gears. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, I'm Ty Warner with Kissoft USA. If you have questions, please find our website at kissoftusa.com. Uh, if you're looking at this uh, through LinkedIn, you can find our Kissoft USA channel on uh, YouTube. And we have lots of other uh, tutorials there as well. If you have questions, please feel free to contact us, 715-477-0828 as my direct line, and uh, happy gear designing, uh, and happy new year. This is our first video, and we have uh, some more videos we'll be putting out shortly. Thanks again.